Shalom family. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening and welcome to our weekly news update. And I am thankful that I get to do this with you every week. Uh, we get a chance to cover some things that perhaps uh, you may not have covered. Um, one of the things that we found out when we started to ask people and talk to some of our brethren is that many of our brothers and sisters had checked out of the news and were not listening to uh, uh, reports. And, and, and that's understandable because after all, uh, there's so much manipulation, there's so much propaganda and gaslighting. Now we've got uh, uh, government leaders pretending they never uh, put any restrictions on anybody, pretending that, uh, you know, this whole uh, thing that, that everybody went through uh, this last several years didn't even happen. So you have gaslighting. And so who could blame you? We've got busy things to do. We've got a lot that we've got to take care of. Uh, those of you that are wise and see trouble afar off, you're busy. You don't have time to be sitting around watching every single frantic news update that comes along. And so as a service to our brethren, and we believe in washing feet around here, um, uh, we, uh, it, it was really strongly impressed upon me that we needed to take one time per week to just review things that are fulfilling Bible prophecy. And there are some several things that are happening now that, um, that we need to be aware of, but not so overly concerned about to the extent that it stops us from being effective. It stops us from being found faithful to do the things we're called to do. Nevertheless, we should be aware of everything that is going on around us. And so it is not wise, in my opinion, and this is just my counsel, to be ignorant of the winds of change happening in the nation, happening where you are. Uh, if you're traveling, right, if you're going to be traveling from one part of the world to another part, it's wise to take a look before you go there to see if the conditions are favorable, how things are going there. Uh, when there's, uh, you know, obvious disruption in um, uh, civil order, then that's probably not a place you want to go to. That's a place you want to escape from. And so we're seeing a lot of indications that we are coming in for a landing. The last days are upon us. And I know many of you are feeling that where you are. So thank you again for joining us. I can see that I got one five by five out there. Thank you again for those of you that are on the chat with us here on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, we certainly are grateful that you join us this evening. And so let's get to the news, shall we? Uh, as always, we begin here at Remnant Watch. And Remnant Watch is a ministry service of Remnant House and provided by the members of Remnant House. So thank you, Remnant House members, for your service. And uh, we put uh, many, not every single story, some of them do slip by us. So if you catch one we didn't post, let us know. But uh, we generally put all the stories that we're going to talk about and that are included in previous updates right here on this very easy to scroll through uh, index that allows you to uh, see the headlines, see what's going on, take a quick scan through and pick up uh, where you left off. And so this helps you keep track of things that are happening in the earth as they happen. And we try our best to uh, we're not we're not news people, so we're not sitting in the newsroom every minute of the day, but we do try to keep this as updated as we can to keep it relevant to what we are dealing with today. All right. So thank you again uh, for those that are helping with that. And I'm very grateful for those that send in articles, send up things. A lot of times it's overlap. A lot of times I already heard about it, but it's still valuable and also says you're awake, paying attention. This is a good thing. So again, bookmark Remnant Watch, a great place to uh, pick up a lot of the, uh, the different resources or the different articles that we are pointing at during our broadcast. Now, I wanted to keep you guys abreast of uh, Arizona. And uh, so I put this at the front of our broadcast so we wouldn't forget about it. Uh, we haven't really updated on our, our pal Carrie Lake uh, lately. And... Um, She's had a rough go of it, right? So we knew that they had put a case in to uh, district court here in Arizona, and it went up to the Arizona Supreme Court. 
the Supreme Court uh, only allowed one of the claims uh, to go back down, um, and they basically allowed uh, the Carrie Lake camp the opportunity to review one of the counts that uh, they had appealed, and that account was concerning signature verification and the um, uh, uh, chain of custody uh, issues that they had discovered during the election review. And so here we've got an update. Maricopa County judge has fast-tracked a hearing on Carrie Lake's final Arizona election challenge claim, and it is a considerable claim. Uh, Maricopa County judge has fast-tracked the schedule to resolve the remaining piece of Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake's election challenge with oral arguments set for Friday. In March, the Arizona Supreme Court ordered Lake should get new consideration of one of her legal claims regarding how Maricopa County verified signatures on ballot affidavit envelopes matched what is in the voters' existing records. Maricopa County Superior Court Judge Peter Thompson on Monday set a schedule for that to happen, directing attorneys to file written arguments arguments uh, throughout this week to debate in court on Friday. So they're trying to figure out a way to get out of this, because if we look and if the country takes a look at what they did, you and I both know, we all know what they're going to find. Lake's attorney said that they will file motions with the judge to reconsider part of Lake's original case that was already dismissed, as well as to consolidate it with pending public records requests on which Lake is seeking to examine ballot affidavit envelopes. And so the heat is on. They're starting to look closely at some of this stuff. And again, we already knew this. And uh, it seemed as though uh, those that were pushing through what we know to be questionable um, activity, uh, they knew they only had so much time. Uh, as you recall, the uh, recall effort for Katie Hobbs, the current installed governor of Arizona, uh, is set to begin in the next third in the next month. Uh, I believe June is when they will um, officially begin the recall efforts for her. And based on the momentum that the Cary Lake camp maintained through this six months, so this was a huge factor, was would she keep her crowd with her through this tedious process, right? It's one thing to get jacked for an election. It's one thing to get jacked for a month or two. It's another thing to stay excited, stay pumped, stay in it through this long, tedious court process. And these folks know that. So... Kudos to Carrie Lake, regardless of the results that come out here. You got to hand it to this lady for having the, the courage to stand up and, uh, and, and not take it lying down, if you will, not, not quit. Uh, so we've got a lot of respect for Carrie Lake. Good job there. And uh, we're going to continue to keep an eye on this case because I think it is pivotal to uh, uncovering fraud nationally. And what they've done in one place, they most likely have done in multiple places. So this does become critical, folks. And, and uh, I do think it's a point of prayer because, again, it is a matter of righteousness, not a matter of politics. So our concern as the remnant, as the household of faith, uh, we don't get involved in politics. It really doesn't matter which one is in charge. What matters is that they rule righteously, right? So uh, and that they're entered in properly, that that they're not um, entering in through fraud. And so that is important. And we pray against that. We pray against fraud. Uh, so we're believing Elohim to clean up that mess. OK, and uh, now you're seeing some major, major pushback going on against those speaking of political forces uh, that were given a pass for a long time. Uh, they were allowed to go and, you know, sort of pillage. And many of us were all looking at these pictures and images of, and still seeing images of people, you know, rolling out of stores with grocery bags full of things, not paying for it, um, just, uh, you know, brazenly. Well, businesses that endorse the BLM are now closing their stores in San Francisco as rampant violence and crime overwhelms. So you see that, the results weren't good. Several businesses that endorse BLM are now closing their stores in San Francisco. What's this? What's going on here? Another proof that the adage, go woke, go broke, is undeniably true. And so we're seeing some serious uh, pushback. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I do think I find that to be interesting. We, we knew that it would only last so long. Anarchy, uh, chaos, 
uh, wickedness will only prevail for so long before there's generally a pushback. Now, again, this is part of what we were expecting to see in the last days uh, because we were told that men would be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Um, we know that they don't repent for their thefts and for all of the various things that they do. And so we're not shocked. Uh, no, none of the remnants should be surprised to find this uh, happening right now. And of course, uh, it just confirms what we already knew. And that's that um, <laughs> these policies weren't very intelligent. They weren't very forward thinking. And as a result, uh, yes, as one of my brethren said, they do reap what they sow. And in fact, San Francisco, boy, this whole area is really be, be, beside the rain and the pummeling and all the other things. Um, now they've got the National Guard being deployed. Again, this is here domestically here in, in San Francisco uh, to fight against drug zombies. So not down at the border, not, not you know, helping out in other ways. No, you got drug zombies, uh, but deals are still happening in the streets. So it doesn't matter. San Francisco brought the National Guard and California Highway Patrol this week to combat trafficking and drug addled zombies in the street. But four days later, sources said the post deals are still dealing are, are still going down the street and struggling city finally announced it would take a tougher stance on crime. So it's finally figuring out that maybe this wasn't the right direction to go. And as a result of these um, uh, areas that are falling apart, I mean, this is horrifically sad to observe. And I do believe reflects the reprobate mind as prophesied in the scripture that we are seeing a form of that. I believe it's manifesting in various forms. This is one of the forms of the reprobate mind that is manifesting. That is really hard to look at. I am sorry, but that, that really is tough. And I really feel terribly for the victims. And again, Remnant continue to pray for those that are, that are fallen victim, that are captives of these chemical, these sorcerers, right? Because they, they concocted these things uh, with the intention of making them addictive so as to make you permanent customers, of course, not being concerned whatsoever with the outcome and with the um, uh, societal effect. And uh, this, is, this is wickedness beyond words. As the Bible tells us, the love of money is the root of all evil. And that is certainly the root of what you're seeing there. And I also believe that it fulfills the book of Revelation's prediction that sorcery or pharmakia, as it is said, called in Greek, from which we get the word pharmacy, is uh, responsible for the deceiving of the nations through pharmakia, is what it says. Okay, so this is having horrific societal effect. And you may say, well, you know, that's only affecting, you know, those people. And how does that really affect, you know, normal people or regular people? That's just the druggies, right? No, uh, these things have a way of rippling to affect entire geographical areas. So you cannot take a look at this type of thing and think it stays isolated because it doesn't. And take a look here. In north of San Francisco, shocking images show the two-mile-long vehicle encampment made up of people living in RVs, trucks, and trailers. So they have been discomfited, confirming the word of Elohim that he would discomfit people. Now, this is a pretty extreme level of discomfort along Highway 101 north of San Francisco as low-income people are pushed out of the housing market. So you're going to end up in a camp. Question is where? Look at that. So, uh, again, people are struggling. Uh, the images from this are amazing, to say the least. Uh, when you see the length of, of the cars, the length of the, um, uh, the number of vehicles that are part of this uh, sort of uh, standing caravan um, that, uh, excuse me, uh, that, of course, is part of the, the landscape now. Now, everyone that goes to California has to live with looking. Let me get rid of this. Sorry about that, guys. Have to live with 
with that reality. Well, let's get to the story. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. They want to run ad after ad before they show you the story. Now, this is why we don't watch the news, right? So I'll skip all those for you. So you don't have to watch. <laughs> And this is what they do to you. They torture you. Uh, and they make the news trivial, by the way, by doing this, by giving you trivial advertising. They take the seriousness of the story away through this frivolity. Uh, it's a very commonly done thing. Here we go. We're, we're back. Let's see if we can get it going here. A line of RVs, trucks, trailers, which was nearly two miles along Highway 101, uh, north of Marin County. and. I mean, look at this. Wow, that's sad. That's what we're coming to, right? Because they're pushing certain things and they're deliberately, uh, intentionally uh, bringing this kind of destruction and um, despair to the people of, now this is Northern California. So, so much for the policies that they thought were going to be proactive and effective. Uh, They were gaslighted. They were played. And now the average person who built the state, who does the heavy labor, who does the hard work, the people who do the jobs nobody else wants, they ended up living on the side of the road. I don't understand why there's even an ounce of loyalty left for Babylon, but... I digress. Moving into the financial sector, we've uh, been keeping an eye on this because, of course, we're watching the slow and consistent collapse of the Western economic system with intention. After all, folks, they can't make you buy the new one till they destroy the old one. All right. So we saw the first salvo with these banks that came unglued. Um And you've heard enough about them, so I don't need to go into that. But did you know that over 2,000 banks are also insolvent, according to the Telegraph? So this was posted as of May 6th, just a couple of days ago. Uh, The U.S. banking sector has recently been hit by a major crisis. Almost half of the 4,800 banks in the U.S. are nearly insolvent as they have burned through their capital buffers. The Telegraph reported earlier this week, citing a group of banking experts. And what they've essentially been doing is uh, playing it fast and loose as a with a, an accounting um, trick that they use to make their books a look a little bit better, but they're all upside down. So what was once the safe place to put your money and what once was the place everyone trusted is now starting to become very dangerous. Charles Schwab and other big banks may be secretly insolvent. That is absolutely true. Uh, Long been insolvent. It's just now they can no longer hide the reality as bank runs quietly happen. Remember, in the old days, the bank runs, you had to run down to the bank. You saw like the Chinese even did that. They ran down to the bank, right? Nowadays, bank runs happen nice and quiet. Nowadays, you don't see the crowd outside the bank because they're all taking their money out online. They're using their debit card. They're pulling it out. They're doing wire transfers. They're doing ACH transfers. Uh, They're spending the money, uh, right? So they're finding ways to get it out of the account in other ways, not necessarily walking down to the bank, which we've all come to know won't work because they don't have the money there. And they've actually even told us that. Uh, So now people are starting to look for new ways to manage their money. What a shock. I wonder if there was ever any warning about these things coming. (laughs) Right? And then you have, on top of that, you have recalcitrance uh, manifesting in your political spectrum, which is intended, I believe, to exacerbate the situation. Uh, So as to continue, and this is part of the theatrics, uh, to ratchet up the discomforting uh, and the um, 
situations throughout the nation. The White House says it will not negotiate on the debt ceiling extension. I just want to remind everybody the Republicans have already put forth a budget and it's been rejected. So President Joe Biden will not negotiate with Republicans on their push to make spending cuts a precondition for extending the U.S. debt ceiling and avoiding a disastrous default. Folks, they're just trying desperately to survive and they want no restrictions. This is not an issue that we will negotiate on, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said. Biden has offered to meet the Republican Speaker of the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy, for crisis talks at the White House next week. However, he's doubting, uh, he's doubling down on a refusal to link Republican spending cut goals to the usually uncontroversial accounting procedure to allow more government borrowing. Uh, and I think it's very wise and, frankly, the responsibility of the Congress to do everything they possibly can to push for some type of balance uh, budget amendment or uh, some type of reduction of costs. Uh, that's just common sense. That's how we all grew up. Everybody that's my age or in our age bracket is going, well, yeah, duh, balance the checkbook. But you see, we're in a we're in a strange time right now, folks. We're in a time when these people think they invent money and they're being, <coughs> excuse me, disconnected <coughs> from their printing presses. But that doesn't kill the addiction. That doesn't mean that their their addiction's over. So they're, what do you mean? When I'm, what do you mean I'm out of money? I still got checks. <laughs> I can't be out of money. I still got checks in my checkbook. Uh, and so you, you've got some very serious mental gymnastics going on here uh, that are going to cause problems uh, down the road. And again, these recalcitrant things do affect you, and they are going to affect you at the grocery store, the gas pump, the bank, everywhere else. White House is predicting economic fallout if U.S. fails to make debt payments. The U.S. government's failure to pay its financial obligations might result in 8 million job losses this summer and 6% decline in GDP, according to the President's Council of Economic Advisors. So if you believe the economic advisors, well then, this is going to be one, one uh, seriously challenging summer that's coming up. And so what we have coincidentally along with that is the rollout of the Fed. Now, I'm not going to go over that again. We've done several broadcasts that included that information. And there's more information that's going to be coming out on the central bank digital currency, CBDC, central bank digital currency. The central bank is the ones that have been running things all this time. So you can understand why there is massive pushback internationally against participating in any product that any central bank puts out. After what we have all been through internationally, there is a massive level, and that's what BRICS is all about, and even 20-some-odd states of the United States have already applied to operate within BRICS. So that tells you that even the states in the United States have had about enough of central banks. And again, central banking, uh, this is the third charter, I think, that was given for central banks. They were usually limited. Uh, I believe the first one only got a 20-year charter and wasn't renewed. Uh, and so they're, they're extremely problematic, uh, have been a source of serious debate for hundreds of years, folks. And now we no longer have to debate because we can see the colossal, epic failure that is all of these institutions run by greed. Okay, really run by Nephilim, but that's a different discussion. All right. <laughs> and so states are starting to come up with solutions that won't involve central banks. Okay. Uh, and Texas is one of the states that's leading the way. Kind of proud of Texas. Got a lot of fam-bam in Texas. Got a lot of courage in che in Texas. Texas committee passes a bill to create 100% reserve gold and silver backed transactional currencies. Okay, this is the trend that you're seeing now. Uh, the Texas House committee passed a bill to create 100% reserve gold and silver backed transactional currencies. Enactment of this le legislation, we create an option for people to conduct business in sound money. Okay, so that is fantastic news for those concerned about being able to do uh, uh, commerce 
outside of community commerce, right? So inside a community, you can create your own, but outside a community, you got to have something that's universally accepted. That's what a currency is meant to do for you. So as to keep things, um, on a just weight and a just measure. It's not a just weight and a just measure if one country can just print more. So that's been an unjust weight and an unjust measure, an uh, something that is abhorrent to Elohim, something he considers an abomination uh, for all this time. So it, it has judgment all over it. So we don't wish well the central bank. We do wish well the prosperity of the people, right? So the people in Texas, if they got, if they took all of their central bank U.S. dollars, right, that's really what they are. They're not from the government. They're central bank dollars and traded them for these gold back dollars from Texas, right? Let me put those back on the screen again. So let's say the people in Texas were to do this, um, they would be transferring their wealth out of the control of a central bank and their their wealth would then be backed by whatever the strength of that currency is. So you see the wisdom of that is it takes you completely out of their control. This is what they absolutely do not want, but this is exactly what's going to happen. The more they try to control everyone, the more initiatives and creativity you're going to see as people say, no, thank you. You had all you had thousands of years to to show us your Babylonian money magic. And we're done looking at it. We're sick of it. You robbed everyone. Look at these people now living on the side of the road because they believed in the Babylonian money magic system. And I want to tell you what's sad about this, saints, is that uh, these people did not expect, they did not, you know, we have, you know, people can get an attitude, a little bit of a two toward people that are economically challenged. Folks, these guys were workers. These folks were, uh, many of these people were, they have RVs. How do you get an RV? How do you get an RV? You had to be some, you had to be working. You had to be, you had to have some money. You couldn't, they don't hand those away. So clearly these were not deadbeat people and they got knocked to the ground to the point where that's their solution. That tells you a lot about what's happening on the real, uh, on the street level of the economy. And it is not good. Okay. And no RVs are not cheap. So people living in an RV, you know, and, and they're all, I mean, that, that tells you they weren't the they weren't the the poorest people is my point. They were probably hardworking folks, and even they are on the side of, two miles long on the side of the road. That so you know let's not be down in the mouth on somebody that's in that situation because wow it, it looks like it could happen to anyone at any time, right? Okay, and now again. Speaking of pushback, we knew it was going to happen. It was only a matter of time before truth would prevail. So those that were pushing lies and pushing lies and pushing lies, now they got new problems. Take a look at this. Class action lawsuit over COVID, you know what, the Jabiru's injuries, and it's targeting the Australian government. And they're, of course, claiming a cover-up. Uh, so va a vaccine injury class action lawsuit has been filed against the Australian government and the medicines regulator. Now, again, scripturally, we were warned about pharmacia. So, again, we look at this from the biblical perspective. And we knew going in that this was, I mean, they use unclean shellfish in the process of making these that's the end of it we're all done right there amen and so yeah and i mean like i said anybody that is in an rv or anybody that's battling that here tim just said you know these are not cheap uh, uh yeah and so my point there is that you're not dealing with the lowest economic rung that found themselves on the side of the road. You're dealing with 
you know, fairly what you would have considered well-to-do people probably a year ago. Uh, and that's the point. OK. And so the pushback is going on now, which is going to cause even more problems. Um, many of you heard this name, Rachel Walensky. Uh, she played a key role in the COVID response. And all of a sudden she's resigning. I mean, aren't they doing victory laps? Uh, shouldn't they be you know, talking about how successful their campaign was? Nope. They are resigning and heading for the hills. Uh, you know that, of course, the New Zealand uh, Prime Minister Jardin got out of there a couple of months ago. So they're not sticking around to uh, face the music. They want to get out of Dodge. They want to get away. They want. Hey, I didn't. I didn't restrict anybody. I didn't lock anybody down. Uh, I didn't. It wasn't me. No, no, that was. Uh, oh no, everybody's running for cover now. Okay, we'll see what happens. But that's very interesting. So time exposed it. And uh, now we just wait to see how it falls out. Uh, this was interesting information for those of you watching uh, military activity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Air Force Leader Brown will be appointed to chair the Joint Chiefs report, say. And so they've removed or is retiring. Miley is retiring. Uh, I believe this signals a shift in the military. I'm going to say it again. I believe this signals a shift in the military. Uh, and when this person was appointed uh, to the uh, Joint Chiefs, just to, to be part of the Joint Chiefs by President Trump, President Trump, of course, made a big deal about his middle initial. Okay. So General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., and uh, so I think this is, again, part of the theatrics, folks. Uh, Brown will replace General Mark Milley, who is slated to retire this summer after serving as a top military advisor. So, again, what do we do? We watch from the 10,000-foot view, and this looks like theatrics to me. Um, we should be expecting some patriot pushback this summer. And uh, that's probably what we're going to see, and, and I believe, again, uh, as the ratcheting is going up, um, we are seeing a change in the posture internationally of countries against the United States. And this story led Remnant Watch uh, is on the top. China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. Interestingly enough, uh, Dmitry Dudeman's prophecy included these four countries. So very important that we keep an eye on this. China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran are investing in ways to nuke us. The time is now for a missile defense. That's kind of funny. Um, I kind of thought we already did that. Aren't we all around the world selling missile defense systems? Isn't that part of what the United States is doing? But I don't know. You know, they, they talk so much. Who knows what they're really saying? Uh, if deterrence is dead, then the concept of mutually assured destruction is obsolete and comprehensive missile defense must be revisited as an essential capability to protect our citizens. So now they're going to talk uh, about spending who knows how much money on missile defense. No, don't change. Don't negotiate. Don't don't make peace with nations. No, just just build missile defense because then you don't have to change. You can just continue to be. <laughs> <laughs> you can continue to be the whore of Babylon, <laughs> right? I mean, no, that doesn't have a good fate. So this is about to come to an end, folks. The nations are ratcheting up, okay? Uh, and they're tired of looking at their landscapes being blown up. And how many know they're, 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 they're itching to return the favor? Russia evacuates civilians from parts of Ukraine ahead of the Kiev counteroffensive. And Ukraine imposes a curfew on areas to close the front line after Russian shelling of civilians. Uh, of course, you got to remember where you're getting this news. So this is the Wall Street Journal. Which side are they going to slant the news? You guessed it. Uh, they're pro-Russian, right? So they're going to you got to realize that. So you got to kind of take some of these stories with a bit of grain of salt, realize who you're listening to. Uh, but what we do know is that there was an attempted counteroffensive. 
and Russia blew them up. Yeah, uh, reports are still coming in, so it'll probably be next week when we update on that. But it looks to me like from what I'm the early information that I'm starting to see that I'm sure will come out this week. Looks like Russia preempted. They did a preemptive strike on the new equipment that Ukraine had received. And they they dropped like they dropped. They killed like a thousand people. This just the last couple of days over the weekend. And uh, again, unconfirmed. So I, I can't put a put an article up. This is just what I've heard through reading certain certain information wires and things. Uh, uh, so, you know, you got to be really careful with the information you're getting from mainstream because a lot of that, of course, is slanted. Uh, switching to a different part of the world, the Middle East. And in the Middle East is becoming hotter and hotter by the day, folks. Uh, so if you remember... We talked about Israel attacking Syria's airport and uh, uh, dropping missiles on them and so forth. Syria has been in the crosshairs. They're considered an Iranian proxy. Uh, And so, again, you know, uh, understand that hostility levels are going to continue as we go forward. And uh, the uh, uh, Jordanian foreign minister, Uh, Their top diplomat is encouraging regional talks. So I'm going to start here. uh, And this is starting the tone. Jordan's top diplomat said on Monday, the regional talks with Syria are a step in the right direction to end a decade of war-torn countries' political isolation and bring Damascus, Damascus back into the Arab fold. You see Now, the scripture specifically, I believe it's Isaiah 40, 54, 17, if I remember correctly, and it specifically prophesies that Damascus will be a ruinous heap. And for thousands of years, that scripture, many were waiting for that scripture to be fulfilled. And today, Damascus is becoming a ruinous heap. But now we're seeing more push to. Uh, give Syria back its sovereignty, and we already know that there are forces arrayed against that. So will the new push bring more emphasis, if you will, and consequently heighten military activity? We see Assad that is Uh, playing a strong hand in diplomatic poker with his Arab neighbors. As part of the talks this week, regional leaders signed a joint declaration that would eventually toss, watch this, U.S. and Kurdish militaries out of the country. So again, this is a very steady but consistent push by the Arab uh, community to normalize and strengthen Syria. And again, this is the nation directly north of Israel. Uh, Well, it does have Lebanon there, but it is directly north and uh, definitely within theater of operations. As you know, uh, Israel is constantly engaging in. They they, um, accuse Syria of being a proxy for Iran and consequently being friendly to Iranian forces, which they stage in Syria, according to Israel. So this is the reason why they attack when, uh, you know, they attack airports and attack different things is they uh, essentially are attacking Iran when they're attacking Syria in in an indirect way. Now that the change of posture is going on, the West is declining. America doesn't have the military strength to fight multi-front wars. This is about to get interesting, folks. Uh, And to add Again, more flavor to this very exact same topic. The Iranian president is arriving, arrives in Syria on the first, on his first visit in 13 years. So monumental. It's the first visit in 13 years. And uh, Iranian president Ibrahim Raisi has arrived in Syria uh, and reported on Wednesday, according to it, Raisi has been accompanied by a large delegation, including Foreign Minister Hussein 
Amir Abdoli Halian. I don't know how to say that. And um, this is uh, the first president, the first presidential visit uh, in 13 years. So obviously something to note, something of of uh, importance. But again, I think that if you zoom out, don't get too involved in the details and just look at what is generally occurring um, and the tenor and where they're going, by the way. So their partnership is with those in the east, not with those in the west. Watch this. So you see the top Turkish diplomat. So this is just north of uh, Syria and slightly east. A uh, Turkish diplomat says it will go to Moscow on May 10th to take part in meeting on Syria. So now you're seeing the Russian um, contingent, if you will, being involved in the Syrian dialogue, which has already included much of the Arab community, which is all the nations of the Arab community that represent the OPEC nations and represent the oil producing countries. So uh, this is a very serious block of nations that are now wanting to take a serious and more proactive role in establishing or recovering Syria as a nation. And so this obviously presents challenges to the West, which has been attempting for quite some time to, uh, it looks to me like they were trying to dismantle uh, Syria. And now outside the United States, um the tone is no longer respectful, okay? Now the United States is being called, be, being called a terrorist state or a state sponsor of terrorism. These are things that we as a country used to say of other nations that were, you know, uh, doing bombings and things and hurting people and what have you. Now the world is calling the U.S., a sponsor of terrorism. This is very serious shifting in narrative, okay? And so, again, detecting the shift that is occurring, uh, the world's no longer afraid of the big bully. And this spells doom for she who rides the beast, if you will. And again, this is just what we saw in the book of Revelation. So we know at some point Babylon takes its massive fall. Looks like it's getting set up. Okay. And they are coming. Uh, like I said, there was a massive attack on um, Ukraine forces over the weekend. And uh, they are coming directly for Zelensky. So he's now a marked man, according to the former president of Russia, uh, they have no choice but to eliminate Zelensky. So they've now turned it into something personal. Uh, I think that uh, both sides believe that they have, uh, you know, legitimacy and legal ground to stand on. Uh, at the end of the day, however, I do believe you're going to see uh, the Russian forces prevail and and probably expose uh, an enormous amount of, of back dealing that is going on uh, in in Ukraine. And I believe some of the same things we're also going to find out in um, Taiwan. So I think that you're going to find that, that some of the same forces that were, were at work in Ukraine and in parts of even the United States uh, although the uh, pushback there has been extremely aggressive, and so uh, they are no longer comfortable. Much of the administration that is running the United States is not even in the United States. They make a habit of staying out of the United States for legal reasons. Uh, there is some serious, serious battle going on internally. This was prophesied. We knew that this would occur. Uh, and we were given additional warnings in the form of dreams uh, and visions that were given uh, well in advance. So we knew uh, in advance of this arrival of these events that there would be an internal uh, civil war, if you will, inside the military, that there would be uh, combat between factions. And so many of the things that we're seeing today uh, that there would be underground cities, not just bunkers, 
You know, they, they sold everybody like it was all, you know, military, military bunker, you know, military, it's, it's for military, it's a military thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you were to see pictures, if you actually were to go down, you probably couldn't. But I mean, if you could, you'd see it looked like a mall. Um, the Ruach showed this to me. It looked like looked like you went to a mall. And they had fake windows that, that looked like you were outside. It looked like you were in above ground, but you were underground. But they had done such a good job that you couldn't tell. And that was so that those that were living in that space would feel normal. And that was the intention. And that eventually the people on the surface would want that as opposed to surface life. And I think they've overplayed that hand. Um, I, I, I think they've, they've grossly overplayed it. And so you're seeing uh, the, the pushback against that. You're seeing um, uh, sl slow leaks of, of information. Not a lot yet, but I think you're going to see a lot more information that confirms the uh, conflict that's been going on internal as uh, people are trying to hold the, the, you know, those, those that are in authority uh, to account. And that's a daunting task. Uh, somebody said, why doesn't the United States just file bankruptcy? It already did three times. And so its final bankruptcy concluded in 1999. In the year 2000, the United States was required to reset its Congress and Senate and the presidency. It didn't do that. That's why they vacated. Uh, and you had the hanging Chad situation. Uh, that was a ruse to cover uh, some of the legal requirements that they had there. And if you, uh, 1999 was a big year, very big year. If you pay attention to uh, War Castles and listen to, um, I forget his name, uh, Russell J. Gould, uh, 1999, he captured the flag of the United States of America and became the um, postmaster general for the U.S. Uh, territory. Uh, people dismiss it, make it sound like it's no big deal. They can't get around it. And uh, so we have some serious legal issues. That's one of the reasons why they can't just keep kicking the can down the road. They finally been called on all of these games and they've run out of capital to keep financing it. And nobody in the world, none of the countries that normally would buy the the paper, you know, and pretend wink, wink to support the hegemony are playing the game anymore. So this is bad news for the, you know, the fat kid on the block that's used to everybody else just being scared of, and he's never done a push up. you know, <laughs> now that country's going to have to work like everybody else. And that's what I think you're going to start to see. You're going to start to see that economically it's going to be very difficult uh, in their system, uh, where the blessing will be, will be upon communities that are united in one accord. There you will see the commanded blessing of Elohim, but you will not see it inside their system. So you should understand that all of their systems are abiding under a curse. Their time of judgment has arrived. So betting on them or counting on them is a fool's errand. Very wise to start exploring alternative ways to communicate, alternative ways to um, conduct commerce, and stop giving your labor and time to Babylon. Uh, every day that, that the saints work to help Babylon is a day they're not helping to build the future for their children and grandchildren whom we're trying to protect. We've already had our shot, folks. Okay? We're doing what we're doing right now, and we're awakening for sake of children and grandchildren who will not have a country and will not have a future if we continue to follow these uh, geniuses, for lack of a better term. Uh, if we continue to follow them, then we shouldn't be shocked at the results we get. We get collapse, and it's intentional. We get you know, all kinds of lies and deceit as part of our common experience where you can detach, and disconnect, like Revelation 18 says. And so you see all this comes right back to the scripture. It all comes back to the same message of the gospel of the kingdom. And the question is, do you want to continue to seek first 
um, the world and the world's ways and the world system? Or do you want to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness? Now, I believe he is separating people that he is going to keep blessing. That abundance will be theirs and he's going to continue to give them prosperity in every way. I believe there are those that are starting to unite in one accord in the name of our Messiah and are standing together and will be will be doing just fine in the days to come. People that thought lone rangering was a good idea are going to end up on the side of the road, okay, and not have a friend in the world. And at that point, that's not a good time to try to make friends. It's a little late. So while you have the mammon of unrighteousness, make friends to yourselves of the mammon of unrighteousness while you have opportunity. We are in the moment of the foolish foolish uh, uh, steward and uh, the unjust steward. This is the moment of it. In fact, you can see an unjust system is being judged, right? Don't be a part of that. My encouragement to all of you, find your fold and then be found faithful. Get together with brothers and sisters in your part of the world and start formulating plans. Don't make them half in and half out. You need, the, you need to make plans that are all in and all encompassing. They don't care about the folks that are sitting on the side of the road in Northern California. They're not making any plans for them. They're not providing any food for them. They're not going to take care of them. So all the time and energy that all of those two miles of people put into the matrix and put into Babylon to build their system did not get repaid to them in forms of security or blessing. This is abhorrent. This is abominable. It should not be true, but it is. And this is why we have to stop laboring with the heathen, with those that don't love our Elohim and who operate only in the love of money. Okay? Instead, we need to now form communities. Sure, we can still do business with other things and other groups, but we won't ever trust them again right? We can, sure, we can we can buy this or sell that, but we're going to know now going forward that we can't trust them with your housing, with your electricity, with your water, with your food, even with your air. All of these things you now have to take dominion over and you have to take responsibility for and quit waiting for somebody to come save you. OK, you are a savior. There are many saviors on Mount Zion. We need all of you to get together. Now, there's three ways you get something done. Time, energy and resource. When you're short on one, you got to push the other two. We're short on time. So you've got to push energy and you've got to push resources. Don't be showing up at some group empty handed because you didn't take the time to liquidate some resources so you can bring something with you. Folks, we've got to band together with wisdom. And it's the ones that are wise that are going to endure this time period like nothing happened. But the foolish, they will walk right into a trap and they're going to hit these bumps and they're going to end up on sides of the road. And so we do these warnings and I wake you up a little bit so that you can make better choices. Okay? We're going to watch regardless. Okay, we're trying to be a good example. Our brethren in in Texas are being a good example. I know of a few more. My sister in in New Jersey trying to be a good example. I can't even tell you how many people I have offered uh, housing to in New Jersey who turned me down because they had other plans. No problem. But guess what? There's going to come a day when that won't be available and they'll wish it is right because they still think there's hope to do something in the world, right? Folks, just your brother, just being your brother, just, just giving you my personal opinion, get to the place where Elohim has called you. And if you still need to do some business with the world, then do it from there. But trying to stay in the middle of it as he's already commanded us to get out is in my opinion, um, like jumping off the temple and asking him to catch you. Thou shalt not tempt. Yahuwah, your Elohim. And so my encouragement to you is to fast and pray because some of you are still in harm's way. There were a lot of people that were warned about California. Now, a lot of them got out, right? They got on to other places, got into other communities. So let's hope they're getting along a little better. But these folks, they hung on hoping things would get better right there. They waited too long. And now look where they're at. OK, and so I'm telling you these things because they're not going to get better. This is going to get worse. 
All right. This is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And they're going to attack crypto. They're going to attack all the alternatives. They're not done attacking. They have to attack in order to get everybody to go down the road they want them to go. Okay. You got to be steel hand. You got to have, you know, a little, you know, uh, courage uh, for these days. You got to have uh, uh, ability to handle the pressure. All right. This is the lipsis time. This is, this is tribulation time. This is difficulty time. This is when you've got to look at your family and say, it's time to go. And not everybody, but some of you, you're in a dense populated area. The prognosis is not good, especially once there's interruptions in the supply chain. Man, we had, and everybody that's here on property can tell you, there was one accident, one accident that occurred up on the freeway, which is about 30 miles north of us, okay? And so they had to divert the traffic for just a day or two, and a lot of it was coming down our road, which we never see this traffic ever. But for, you know, for just this short window while they were getting rid of the debris and whatever, the traffic was being diverted. You don't want to know how many trucks we saw per hour, okay, per hour. Uh, folks, that's the supply chain, all right? Whenever you see uh, a traffic jam, next time you're in a traffic jam, don't go get absorbed in your phone. Take a look and just see how many trucks you see behind you and in front of you and count. And just that's that one little section of traffic, that one little moment, and there's 25 trucks, right, or some ridiculous number. And you realize, wow, this system that they built these cities on, it's not sustainable, it's not sustainable. So at some point, you're going to have supply chain interruption. Just like the banks have runs, so do the grocery stores, so do other resources, right? And what we found and what you're going to see is that they are going to make decisions for the masses that, well, let's just make, let's just be clear here and let's not be coy you know that they're going to stay, all their decisions are going to be consistent with their overall goal. So if their overall goal is less of you, then they're going to make decisions consistent with that goal. I hope you're reading between the lines. And so this is why you're going to keep seeing things like this. All right. My final story for tonight you're going to see soft. Thank you again, Natural News. Shout out to our friend over there, Mike Adams. Great guy doing great work. Love that guy. Juices, soft drinks found to contain trace levels of toxic metals under investigation. Now, they did not list the specific beverages. I really wish they had, but they didn't. Uh, so they're leaving it up to us to now figure that out. I think that's a little crazy, but... Unfortunately, they did not reveal. The team identified varying levels of nickel, manganese, boron, cadmium, strontium, arsenic, and selenium in the beverages, well exceeding federal water standards for such contaminants. This is popular juice, soda beverages, also tainted. Uh, so this is a serious thing. And uh, this is one of the things that I believe uh, the enemy has been working overtime to do. Is, is bring in contaminants under the wire. While people are watching the coronation, everybody get your crown? Did you get your crown on? Oh, come on, everybody. You're all royalty. Boy, this Sukkot, we're going to have crowns and tiaras for everybody. We'll have our own coronations. And it won't cost $150 million or whatever they spent. Crazy nonsense. So while everybody's distracted by that, right, what they're doing is they're they're changing labels on your food. And you're going to suddenly start looking and seeing, wait, what's this? What's this? Uh, you know, this new bio product that you're putting in there. What, what, what is this? Bioengineered what? Ingredients? What, what's this? When did you guys change the labels on this? It, we, we were just looking at the wedding a minute ago. And now all of a sudden everything has bioengineered. What, what, hey, what happened to my cocoa puffs? You know, what happened to my Cheez-Its? What happened to my, yeah, everything. Better look again because they're putting nanotechnology everywhere. So you need to be awake. And again, if you're not growing your own food or moving in that direction community-wise, uh, I believe that you need to reconsider that notion. 
So if you're not doing it, you need to re. I don't care where you're living. You could be living in an apartment building. Okay. You got to reconsider this notion. There's hydroponics. There's all kinds of things you can start doing. But let me tell you, what you're putting in your body is affecting you. All right. So they know that. They know that you trust them. Uh, they know that you're going to pour things in. You're just going to open the cap and pour it in. You're not going to examine it. You're not going to question it. You're not going to test it. You're just going to drink it. Bad people might take advantage of that confidence. Don't you think? Okay. So you should not be surprised to find that our adversary, the devil, the wicked one, has inspired wicked spirits to take over bodies, human bodies, and do wicked things. Should that surprise you? No. And the fact that we have allowed, we the remnant, the, the set apart of Elohim, allowed the heathen to make all your food, to, to make anything for you, frankly, is, is laughable when you really think about it. Because there isn't anything they give you, there isn't anything they do, I don't care what it is that you couldn't replace or, or do better. There isn't anything. Uh, and so my encouragement to everybody, stop, consider. You know, when they left Egypt, they stopped going down to the tar pit. They didn't make any more pyramids, man. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't showing up anymore for that. All right, it was time to go. And so my encouragement to all of you is start paying attention. Yes, and you know, it's funny. As you go through the stores, they got you working for their money, and their money is good in their stores. But what happens when you go to the stores and you go, there's nothing here I want? That money no longer has the same value because it doesn't get you the things you want, Not at least not there. Okay, and the whole grocery store concept, the whole grocery store system, that's going into an overhaul. So, folks, and they don't care. They want to reduce numbers. So understand that there are certain thinking processes among certain groups of people that your suffering is to their advantage. The suffering of the masses is to the advantage so that they can push what they want and everybody will be so, you know, disgusted with their life that they'll take whatever they can get. This is where we are. By contrast, you got people that are buying land, banding together. Maybe they can't afford to put any major money in, but they're giving energy and right so time, energy, resource. Uh, right. So if you have you don't have the resource, you're putting in time and energy. You're ready to come and work. You're ready to come in and, you know, roll up your sleeves. That works. And you're going to see success. You're going to see successful people because not everybody has to own land. Sometimes you're partnering with other people that already own it and you're going to go and work. You're going to go and help. And guess what? You're going to get groceries out of that. And you have a family. And if tough times come, you got a group that all know you. But if you're standing back and acting like everybody should just serve you, when tough times come, it's going to be tough for you to make new friends in that time period. This is the time to make them. Okay, this is the time to make friends and join together and partner up and agree, right? Wherever in the uh, nations you find yourself. So <clears throat> some of you are here in the United States. Some of you are abroad in other parts of the world. Doesn't make any difference. Find like-minded people. Start, um, start connecting, being open to them. Maybe you're going to be the central hub. Some of you might be remote, right? So you might be like, well, I'm not going to go anywhere. We're already remote. People should come here, though, if they need it. You know, like they might need to camp. Listen, these people are camping on the side of the road, right? They're camping on the side of the road with their RV. That's sad. They don't even know when they wake up in the morning if half their stuff's going to be gone, right? How, how many want to bet theft is a major problem up and down that two miles? But what if that RV is parked on his friend's property? The same RV. And maybe that's where he's got to live. But at least when he gets up in the morning, he's got friendly faces and people that love him and they care about him. And he doesn't feel completely alone, right? Now, I'm sure they're making community out there. I'm sure they're figuring it out. But Saints, you got this opportunity to pick right now. They don't get a chance to pick. They are with whoever's there. You got this opportunity right now to pick and choose and be wise, okay? 
And so that's why I'm saying this, my brethren. Be sober. Be wise while you have opportunity. Um, get rid of things you don't need. Liquidate that. Get it into forms that you know will trade, regardless of what happens to central banks. Uh, you're going to have to pray and ask him to show you. And you need to learn. Uh, you're going to have to learn new skills. You're going to have to learn. We're all learning new skills. Everybody. I don't know a single person in the remnant. Listen. We went from we don't know nothing about chickens to now we're chicken village. We're supplying chickens in the community here. I'm not kidding you. We went from clueless to we're supplying chickens. Because we gradually learned and got into it. And that's now a thing. <clears throat> Necessity is the mother of invention. Once you have the need, believe me, you're going to figure things out. You didn't figure out before. You wouldn't know how to look at my brethren, uh, my my the the rest, the other Martinez family, the rest of my family over there in Texas. You think you know they didn't go to school for this, and they're taking you right through the journey with them. They didn't go to school for this. They're learning. Uh, there's all kinds of people that are figuring it out. Uh, there's so much help and information online that you can YouTube University just about anything. And probably figure it out. So we have a lot of help. We've got a lot of resources, but you need the energy, and you've got to you got to click off the world. You got to turn that off and say I'm done. Once you do, once you unplug, and you take off to that new adventure, you're going to feel amazing. It's going to be a new life. But you got to let go of the old. This whole standing in between two, halt between two opinions. This is the problem many people are struggling with. This is where their tribulation is. If you ask any of the people who've already made their decision and are they're disconnected, they're out there, they're just watching from a distance, they are not coming back. They are never coming back because they've now discovered that, you know, life outside of Egypt is pretty awesome. Amen. I got to sit on my deck today and the guys fixed my chair, my, my, uh, my massage chair had broken, and I said, you know, I gave a reward. I said, anybody fixes this, I'm going to give you this reward. Well, somebody fixed it. Next thing I'm sitting there, and I'm looking out, and I'm going, can you beat that? Can can you can you beat this? No. I don't want to be anywhere near what's going on out there that I see from a long distance. So my encouragement again, I, I love you all so much. I get it. You know, we're an intense group, so a few would, would be able to hang with us because we're Woo, if you heard intense and you heard intense fire, yeah, we're over here right up the tense fire. Okay. Tense fire is like that was last week. <laughs> Remnant House is super intense. So, you know, not everybody can hang with us, but there's lots of groups forming. And if there isn't one, form one. Start putting them together. Start making connections and invest in those places. So if you, you know, call your cousin and he goes, Yeah, man, I got 10 acres over here and we're all getting together, get your checkbook out. Okay, sell something in the garage, boo-boo. All right, go help them out because you're going to want them to be there for you. Make friends while you have opportunity. Okay, this is this is what we need to do. And we need to be united and in one accord. We need to look out for one another uh, because there's just, the, the wickedness is going to increase, folks. And when they when they take, when they allow the anarchists and the, crazies to just go crazy that's when i want to hear that all of you every one of you are sitting on some porch drinking lemonade watching from a long ways away okay that's that's my prayer for all of you and on that note <laughs> <laughs> I've spent some extra time because I had that I had that admonition, that encouragement in my heart, and I had to get it out. I had to let you know that you got to get moving. And, and again, there's a whole lot of folks that think they'll go ahead and be blessed without honoring Elohim. Uh, that's a fool's errand. He is your first stop. And so you must honor him. Everyone that does has a different fate than those that thought they could go around it. And so don't relearn lessons that we already know. You don't touch a thing from Jericho. Okay? The first belongs to him. Everything in Jericho is his. 
Amen. The person that didn't get that message got stoned to death with his family. Let's not go over that again. Let's not do that again. Let's not be children that need to be taught the basics of the kingdom. Honor Yahuwah Elohim. Be a blessing to your brothers and sisters. Watch as he multiplies your resources and gives you what you need to make your clean escape. That is his promise. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a wonderful evening broadcast. It's been good to sit with you. And I pray that his blessing be upon each and every one of you. Join us again next week at this exact same time on this exact same channel. Please like, share, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening.